Hello. Um, uh, in the last lecture, I have introduced the idea of GMM, generalized method of moments. And we, the basic idea is that our assumption, the assumptions are given by, by some moments, some expectations, expectations of functions of uh, the parameter and the identification result is also stated as uh, in the form that the, the expectations equal to zero for the true value of the parameter. And then as a, the problem was that, okay, we, may, we, we, we would like to estimate the parameter by making the moment functions equal to zero, but when there are more moments more assumptions than you need, then you have to think about the weighting. You may choose some of them, or you may you may need to treat some treat some uh, assumptions more carefully or more seriously than the other assumptions. So as a result, we are going to we are not so we would like to make this equals to zero. So this is our starting point. Our starting point is something equals to zero, but in the end, we are minimizing. We are minimizing the distance, the distance of the sample moment to zero, so to the origin. So, so it is a kind of extreme estimator, and also uh, some textbooks, many many papers call this minimum distance estimator. Literally, you minimize the distance. So even if we start as a Z estimation principle, but in the end it becomes M estimation, M estimation principle. So uh, we are going to study the consistency and uh, asymptotic, asymptotic normality. So the details are slightly different, but the basic ideas are the same. For the consistency, uh, we remember we, we needed uniform convergence and uh, uh, an identification, unique identification condition and uniform convergence condition. So uh, we, the first four assumptions, one, two, three, four assumptions are uh, the same. Basically, they are the same assumptions as the earlier chapter, as in the previous chapters. But we added two new assumptions, additional assumptions, because of the weight. So we have to consider weighting and the assumptions required for the weight is that first, the weighting matrix must be strictly positive definite. So strict positive definite means that like uh, no matter what the value of G hat is, the result, this, this function will be positive. This function will be always positive like n especially strictly positive as long as the moment is not zero so zero is the only the only way to make it equals to zero under this assumption so if it was weakly positive definite then that means uh even if g is not zero the this quadratic form this criterion function can be zero so uh, that breaks down the uniqueness of the solution uniqueness of the minimizer and six it's a uh, it's pretty obvious uh, you may not be able to use the ideal weighting matrix you want but uh, what you use in practice must be consistent for the ideal matrix so for the the limiting so your weighting matrix may change as the sample or the sample size changes uh, but still it has to be converging to something and that must be strictly positive definite right and then uh, then uh, the intuition is the same we get the consistency result so I'm not going deeper than this and then and the next is uh, the asymptotic normality it's this is more important and it's also good uh, practice if you could not understand what was going on in the previous chapter, try this again. So this will give you a very similar but a little bit different proof for normality. So the starting point is this. 
the assumption identification result is given by this and it is satisfied satisfied only at the true value theta zero and we there are some definitions small g moment uh, sample moment and capital G is the derivative is a deri remember this derivative is a matrix because the function G is already m dimensional vector so uh, G is m dimensional function and theta is k dimensional uh, parameter so the derivative must be m by g uh, m by k m by k dimension so this is m by k dimension sample sample derivative and this is the population uh, expectation of the derivative so like this and the derivative may change as theta changes but we specifically we say g equals to the value at theta zero and then uh, the criterion function can be written as q hat theta which is g prime w g well, g hat prime w hat g hat so we call this a uh, quadratic form it's a, it's a, so the vector g hat the sample moment is multiplied twice multiplied prime multiplied and post multiplied so in one dimensional case it will be square it's a square function so in that sense it is called quadratic form and as you as we already said uh, strictly positive and symmetric uh, matrix W uh, will be considered and you your your matrix your rating matrix W hat just needs to converge in probability to the the limiting weighting distribution weighting matrix so we are going to minimize this quadratic form minimize this quadratic form then the problem is um, it involves two theta so that's the difference from the proof from the earlier chapter so there are when you differentiate this with respect to theta you have to think about theta here and theta here but that differentiation is not that difficult so as a result its derivative the first order condition is given this form so you have two times something because g is multiplied twice if you think about quadratic function in a uh, scalar case its derivative like x squared if you differentiate x squared you're going to get two times x so that's why say this is the same intuition you have two uh, because there are two uh, theta appears twice in this function form and uh, so we get this uh, derivative and also remember think about the dimension so g prime g prime is 1 by m w is m by m g is m by 1 so it is one dimensional in the end and the derivative is capital g prime is k by m because capital g is m by k so k by m m by m m by 1 so uh, this must be k by 1 k by 1 uh, k by 1 vector so now then what you can see here is this complicated uh, complicated problems started from the problem started from the fact that the identification condition given by the moments have have a different dimension from the parameter so the dimension of the parameter was k but the moment condition is m dimensional but after some some steps we have the first order condition which is exactly k dimensional so this is k dimensional condition so instead of the m dimensional moment function we are going to use this as our basis of estimation so you may think this part is the weighting matrix in some sense so so m dimensional matrices uh, m dimensional vector is reduced to k dimensional vector by multiplying this matrix 
So the matrix consists of some weighting matrix and the derivative. So, um, so this is this is this is the basic idea. How can we utilize uh, more moment conditions than we needed? Then, uh, I, from, like after some manipulation, we have this. So this is you may think this is the weight. You may think it as a weight function, uh, weight weight matrix for the moment. So we are going to solve this. Like I'm going like you may think as I said this. This matrix can be understood as a kind of a weight. So we are going to solve k equations uh, in this moment restriction. So, and this is the starting point of the the asymptotic normality proof. Remember, in the previous chapter, we also started from the first order condition in the first order condition of the sample criterion function. And from there, we considered Taylor expansion, and then uh, we start, we had to investigate each term in the Taylor expansion uh, expression. So we are going to do the same thing, but as you see, its Taylor expansion should be different because there is another theta. There are two thetas, so we are going to discuss uh, how we have to modify. The, the derivation from the previous chapter in the next uh, video. Okay, thank you for watching. See you later.